Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting Sparks Toyota, and I'm checking out a 2018 Toyota RAV4 in the Adventure trim level. Now the Adventure is part of the LE tier of the RAV4 trim levels, so let's go ahead and check it out. This RAV4 is sitting on two 3555 Bridgestone tires wrapped around 18 inch alloy wheels painted a gloss black. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Ruby Flare Pearl. And that's the one of the things that stood out to me when I first saw this vehicle is the color. I mean, it's just a really nice deep pearl coat that even when the sun shines on it or even in the shade it just looks fantastic to me you'll notice this one has the hood decal here in the center portion of the hood in a satin black and then you have the gloss black portion right here in the center of the vehicle and the grille itself is a matte black then you have a little bit of matte black down here and right here at the very base is a gray metallic uh, painted surface now the emblem actually has a sensor behind it for your radar cruise control so there's a radar sensor just behind that which is a nice place to put it it's in the center of the vehicle and it doesn't stand out you don't even notice it because it's hidden behind the emblem Headlight bezels are, for the most part, black. And then you have a daytime running light uh, LED strip there. The headlights are powered by halogen bulbs and a projector tube for your low and your high beams out of the same tube. It also has halogen powered reflector fog lights. This is what the key looks like. It's a proximity key system designed to where you can just keep it in your pocket and you don't have to take it out. It could be in your pocket, a bag or whatever, and you can use the vehicle 100% without taking it out. So you have the lock and unlock button, the ability to open up the power lift gate and a panic button. It also has a physical key on the inside in case you need that. So looking at the profile of the vehicle, you'll notice it has that same uh, gray portion here at the bottom. And then right above that is all a matte black protective plastic here, like a hard, super durable polypropylene type material around the fender wells and the base of the vehicle all the way around then you have body matching uh, handles for your for your doors a black side mirror the center portion of the windows right here this pillar and back here is all blacked out so that way it kind of uh gives a elongated look of the to the windows and a, and a cohesion of all the windows the bottom portion has the chrome and then the top is black so it's just kind of looking pretty cool there I like the contour of the glass a little bit different from the uh, the roof just giving you a more of a sloped look okay so as long as I have the key it can be in a pocket it could be in a bag whatever as long as it's within a close proximity of this door I can lock the doors by placing my hand over this little sensor right here. See these two little lines? There's a sensor under there. If I put my finger uh, over that sensor, it's gonna lock the doors. To unlock the doors, you simply put your hand behind the handle. It senses the key within a close proximity of this door and it unlocks the door. Now, if, you're, if the key's inside the door, it's not gonna happen. It's only when it's outside the door. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger side door. So you have the soft to touch surfaces up here all the way down and i guess it's kind of like a um like a vinyl type material material right here synthetic vinyl and then you have like a uh kind of a nerf type material up in here a soft synthetic material and then you have your hard plastics down in this area and check it out it's almost like a snakeskin type um pattern right in here in a gloss black it's pretty nice then you have a metallic accent there around the handle and your pockets now you notice the pockets um, extend forward so it's easy to access like say if you slip your cell phone in there while you're sitting down it's easy to access that and it has a place for a large bottle like a bottle of water or whatever check it out you have the adventure 
sill plate in the threshold. Isn't that nice? Manually adjusted cloth seats. And here for the passenger, contrast stitching. The center portion is an ash or a light, uh, a light gray, I guess you can say, with a textured uh, fabric here in the center and more smooth microfiber type stuff here on the ends. And check it out, you have little mountains, little symbol for the adventure package here in the floor uh, floor mats. And you notice they're, they're almost like aftermarket floor mats. They're a slush mat, rubber floor mat that contours in there perfectly. And you notice plenty of leg room, very little tapering going on down here, just wide up in space. You have a little storage pocket right in here quick access stuff soft to the touch material here and then you have your uh, hard plastics up here on the dash kind of a simulated uh, leather texturing dash okay so let's look at the glove compartment slowly comes down and a smooth plastic on the inside pretty traditional though All the rear glass has privacy glass from the factory. This vehicle actually has tinted glass in the front windows here. So this was tinted by the dealer. Uh, that's not something that will come from the factory. Okay, so looking in the back, here's the inside of the back door. So you have hard plastics there and then you have soft to the touch all the way down here around your arm. And then you have your hard plastics around here. has a smaller seal plate, but isn't that cool? It has little mountains. Even has the mountain floor mats back here. That's pretty cool. And they all connect together. One big long floor mat actually, including the center. Look at it, just a very minor hump here in the center floor. So not much um, to impede the legs of the center passenger. Then you have these uh, pockets in the back of the front seats. Okay, so the back seat's actually kind of like a bench seat, but they recline and fold down. So I actually have this seat reclined back as far as it goes, and then the other seat more vertical, as vertical as it goes, just to give you an idea of the articulation of the seats back here. It does have the latch system for car seats, an armrest that folds up, and it has cup holders in it. There's a 12-volt power supply just under here as well. Okay, looking at the back of the vehicle, it has the roof rails with a black shark fin antenna right there in the center portion. Then you have a little spoiler there at the top with the third brake light powered by LED bulbs. Windshield wiper, all gloss black back here, just like the front. Combination of LED and standard bulbs for your tail lights. And check it out, the adventure badge looking all cool. With the white lettering and then you have the RAV4 blacked out. I like the way they have the Toyota emblem with the little uh, dimples there in the background. That looks pretty neat. Backup camera is almost in the center position. It's a little bit offset but uh, pretty close. You have a single exhaust there on the right side. Okay, opening up the power lift gate, you can of course use the key or you can simply push the button. So this, the button is actually in the center position. That's why the uh, rear camera is in the offset position. So we push that button and it'll go up for you. Check it out, it has the adventure cargo mat back here in rubber, nice.
Okay, so you actually have a power inverter back here. Uh, AC, 120 watt, 120 volt, 100 watt, right there. So you can plug in a device. You also have some tie downs, bag holders, that kind of stuff here on the sides. There's a little light. Okay, so you can fold these seats down uh, one or the other. So if you need to add to your cargo space, when you have all the seats occupied with passengers, this is the space you have back here, which is very significant uh, for cargo space. But if you need to add to your cargo space, you can fold down this seat or the other seat or both to add to your cargo space and while maintaining passenger space, which is nice. Okay, so this lifts up and you actually have a spare tire and this is a hard plastic underneath and I guess you can flip this over and use this hard plastic uh, as a surface if you needed to because it is removable you can actually take it out and a little bit of space around the spare tire just in case you need a uh, little bit of extra cargo space for smaller things it even has a place for a shade so the shade uh, is not included with this vehicle but you can install that right here to kind of cover up your cargo space and when you're not using it there's actually a space um, in here and it kind of goes across the spare tire and over to that side there. So that way you can get it out of the way when you're not actually using it. Okay, to close the power lift gate, you can of course use the key again, or we can just push this button right here. And it goes right on down for us. The fuel door is here on the driver's side, which is convenient. And it has a pretty traditional cap with a little tether right here and a place to hang your cap when you're pumping gas. This vehicle has a blind spot monitor system. You can see the little indicator there on the side mirror. So as there's a vehicle in your blind spot, uh, it will alert you by il illuminating that little light. And there's one on each side, one on each side of the side mirrors there. So. There's uh, it illuminates, so if you put your turn signal in that direction, uh, then it's going to give you an audible warning as well. Now the sensor is right back in this area, and it basically senses from the side mirror all the way back to up to one car length behind the vehicle as you're driving. So if there's a vehicle coming in fast, um, it may not pick it up until it gets very close to your vehicle. So you always want to use that as a, an, an extra safety feature and not your main source um, for watching out for traffic as you're changing lanes. Now, it also serves as a rear cross traffic alert system. So as you're backing out of a parking spaces, parking space, uh, you may not be able to see around the cars next to you. So this will alert you if there's a car coming that you don't see. Um, so it uses those same sensors as you're backing out of a parking space to alert you. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, it can be in your pocket and a bag, whatever. Uh, to start it up, you just put your foot on the brake and hold it and then push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat actually hooks in place on this side keeping the floor mat in place and from turning or sliding so it doesn't interfere with your pedals. And there's your accelerator and brake pedal and your footrest here on the left side. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. Okay, to open up the hood, there's a latch pretty much in the very center portion, right above the emblem there. You reach in, move it to the left, and you lift up. Now the hood is quite heavy. Um, so if you're using one hand like I am, it's a little bit of a, a challenge. So it does require a prop to hold it up. And there's actually two places to put the prop. So there's one up here with a little spacer in it. And then there's a lower position. Make the hood go a little bit higher like this. So the hood is actually much higher than the other position. So that way it gives you complete, almost complete access to the engine compartment. Okay, so the engine compartment, you have the seal around the side. So right in here, all the way across the front and across the back there. So that helps with the airflow, the heat transfer and noise uh, while you're driving the vehicle. Okay, so it also has a almost completely insulated firewall back there. And the strut towers are braced in with the unibody structure of the vehicle there. 
has an insulated battery that's very easy to get to right here in front and center. Okay, so this is a front wheel drive vehicle, four cylinder. So we have inline four going this way with, uh, it's a 2.5 liter four cylinder engine, 176 horsepower and 172 pound feet of torque. And it's paired to a six speed automatic transmission. Exhaust is in the front here and the intake is there in the back. So having the exhaust in the front transfers the, the wind blows, hits the exhaust and transfers that heat underneath the vehicle as you're driving and then you, you don't have that heat build up next to the firewall there in the back. Okay, so the inside of the driver's side door looks just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. And you notice the buttons on both sides are kind of slanted down, so that way you can access them and see them a little bit better. I think that's pretty cool. Now the driver has an automatic one touch down and one touch up. door lock controls and then you can lock out the power windows just in case you have children in the back especially manually adjust the seat here for the driver as well as the passenger except for the driver has a height adjuster lever that the passenger does not have so the driver always has something a little bit special usually here to the left of the steering column you have your Side mirror adjustments here. You just pick a side and adjust it with this little pad. Interior dimmer switch for your gauges, lane departure alert button, and your ability to open up your power lift gate back there. You also have a tilt and a telescoping steering column. And once you get it in position, you just lock it in place with this lever. Okay, take a look on the inside from the driver's seat. Looking pretty nice. Now I have the seat adjusted all the way back and all the way down with the height adjuster. And this is probably a little bit, I'm six feet tall and it's so probably a little bit too far back for me to drive, but pretty darn close. I mean, I can reach the pedals and everything. And I probably could drive this way. I would have to extend the steering column out quite a ways, but um, probably a little bit too far back. And you can see the knee room is fantastic. Just nothing to get in the way. And the footrest is perfect for me anyway. Okay, so looking at the steering wheel, it's a leather wrap steering wheel with a smooth leather texturing right in here but not slick or anything it's very it's it's grippy enough I mean it's not super grippy but it has a really comfortable feel and it's soft to the touch as well and the thickness is uh, is about right too you don't want it too thin because it kind of digs into your hands you don't want it too hard because it digs into your bones while you're gripping the steering wheel or whatever So this one, I think they got it right. And then you have little bolsters right there. So it seems like the steering wheel is slightly thinner at the top than the bottom. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just my perspective or whatever. Okay, so let's look here on the left side. Volume for your radio. Change through your presets or your audio tracks here on your radio. Bluetooth controls, you can answer calls, hang up change your mode which is your audio source and your voice recognition button is right here so this has a cruise control now the cruise control uh, button is just back here kind of hidden um, you can turn it on so once you turn it on it also it's not a regular cruise control so um, you can use it as a re regular con cruise control but it also has the adaptive cruise control with the radar system so it keeps you at a set distance between you and the vehicle in front of you if the vehicle in front of you go is going slower than your set cruise speed so this little bar right here you can turn it on you can set it you can resume it and you can pull it in to cancel like so and then you can set your distance between you and the vehicle in front of you by pushing this button it'll actually give you a little visual indicator there as far as the distance I don't think those are exactly car lengths, but that would be a good way of just kind of, um, as a rule of thumb, car length distances. Okay, so you have um, these buttons right here correspond with that little screen between the gauges, which we'll get to in just a minute. Windshield wiper controls for your front and rear is here on the right side. Your turn signal is here on the left, and it has your headlight controls. So you have your daytime running light off, automatic, parking, and then there's your headlights. And then your fog lights are controlled with a separate switch here. 
Okay, so looking at the gauges, I really like that blue background, that's nice. Everything is a flat black, easy to focus on the white lettering popping through. And then the blue is just kind of, uh, just a nice little touch there. RPMs there on the left side with your engine coolant temperature. On the right side is your speedometer with your fuel gauge. Here in the center is a little screen just to kind of give you some additional information. So it has your odometer there in the center, uh, I mean at the bottom there, showing your blind spot monitor system uh, is on. And at the top it has the outside temperature, what gear you're in, and your cruise control, showing you that's on right now. But if we use these buttons right here, uh, we can get some more information. So right now I'm just gonna go left and right to show you this is part of a menu system. So scrolling to the right, you can see little icons pop up there as I scroll to the right. So the first one is the eye, information. So I'm gonna scroll down on that eye, and you can see it gives me a lot of driving data as far as range, fuel economy, eco indicator, and also letting me know when it's time to take a break. You can go ahead and set that up, or a blank screen. Scrolling to the right, just kind of shows you what your radio is doing. Scrolling to the right again, it shows you the um, a lane departure alert system and your adaptive cruise control information there. Scrolling to the right again will be stored messages, and then the last but not least is your settings and you can set up lane departure warning, pre-collision um, system right here and your blind spot monitor. So the only way to turn that on or off is in the screen here, the pre-collision and you can adjust the sensibility, uh, sensitivity I mean of that similar to the radar system. So if you get, you're forgetting a lot of false alerts you can um, you know, broaden it out a little bit better. Blind spot monitor, um, and then your power lift gate, you can turn that on or off as well. Uh, you can also adjust it. So opening adjustment, you can you know, change it to where it's higher or lower, uh, depending on, you know, say the height of the inside of your garage or something like that. Also the little beeping noise, you can turn that up and down. Vehicle settings and then meter settings here. So. Just kind of give you an idea as, whole, as part of the whole menu system, but you don't actually have to go in there if you don't want, but all that information is there when you need it. All right, so look in here. It has a your four-way flashers are here at the top. And then you have some airbag information up there at the top on this little strip. Okay, so around the touch screen, you have some physical buttons. You also have a CD player, volume, tune through the stations. Um, so you don't always have to use the touch screen. You can go to quickly go to different things by pushing this button. So like say audio, the home button is right here. And it's a, it's a combination of your phone and what your radio is doing. But you can go directly to your audio and you can change your audio source. You have your AM, FM, Bluetooth audio, XM. You also have CD, USB, and auxiliary inputs there uh, when they're available. So when you push the apps button now, because there's no uh, Bluetooth phone paired, it's not gonna go anywhere really because you have to have a phone connected uh, to set up your, your navigation application or whatever the case may be. All right, let's go to FM here. So you can see your presets here on the left side, whatever station you're on. You can also change the source and you can also change the sound here. Bass, treble, mids, and then your fade and balance. Okay, so down here is your climate control. So you have a driver and passenger dual zone climate control. And once you can sync them both if you want to, you also have your fan speed, where you want the air to blow, your front and rear defrosters, recirculate the air, and then this is to give some fresh filtered air to directly to your face at a at a high speed. You can push that and it'll it'll do that for a minute or so. Okay, so your eco mode and sport modes are over here. So saving gas or burning gas and having high performance, kind of a uh, you know, dichotomy there. And then you have your USB and uh, auxiliary inputs and a 12 volt power supply little tray right there to put some stuff this one's a little bit deeper than this one this one has a rubberized surface so it's not going to slide around if let's say you put your cell phone there it's not going to slide around too easy and there's a 
There's a cup holder, this little articulating arm that uh, opens and closes. And then you have these little portions here. So let's say you put a mug in there with a um, with a handle. This can kind of lift up and get out of the way. It can also push it. It also pushes down as well. So whichever works for you. Okay, so here's your shifter. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can see what the uh, backup camera looks like. And it's an active guidelines backup camera. So as I turn the steering wheel, it's going to you know, turn those lines as well. Continuing on, that's neutral, drive. And then there's a, a standard mode in which you can cycle through the gear ratios manually if you need to. Usually this would be for downshifting. You'll know what gear you're in because it'll show right up here. At any time, you can push it over back into drive. Okay, so you have a parking brake, handbrake here, a large cup holder here in the center. Okay, so here's your armrest here in the center. Very soft to the touch, as comfortable as can be. And this lifts up in two portions. So you have a smaller portion right here, just to kind of put some smaller stuff. And there's actually two buttons. This one opens up the small portion, the one on the right side pushes, opens up the larger portion. So this is a large place to put some stuff. And it has this kind of pull tab table felt at the bottom. and give you an idea of how big it is there. All right, so here's your rear view mirror and it's a manual day and night mode. Place to put some sunglasses or glasses right up in here and it has a uh, kind of like a foam material on the inside here in the back, but nothing here. Have tap lights, interior lights could all be turned on by pushing it all the way to the right. Have them turned on with the door here in the center portion or turn them all off there. So the visors have mirrors and little lights that turn on as you open them up. It's pretty neat. It also has this little extender that extends out. Okay, so sunroof. So the controls are right in here. And so the sunroof actually has um, a shade that covers 100% of the light. So we can open that up. We can vent it up like so. Or we can open it up. Push it again, it goes a little bit further back. And that's as far as it goes. Let's go ahead and close it up. And we can block all the light if we need to. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So you notice once one seat is reclined, one is more vertical. So you notice that those headrests make a difference uh, depending on the, where they're at. Now, if you fold the seats down, they won't be an issue. But um, you know, depending on your passengers and all that stuff, it will make a, this, you know, a big difference in your visibility. But you notice there in the center, you can see pretty good. It has the windows there on the side, behind the seat, as well as, of course, in the second row there. But uh, of course you have the backup camera, the blind spot monitor system, rear, tra rear traffic, cross traffic alert, and all that stuff to help you out as well. Okay, so if you're still here, you're in luck because I'm gonna give you some more information here. So this is the Adventure, which is part of the LE tier of in the trim level. So if you're not familiar with, with what I'm talking about, I'm gonna extend this out. So you have the SE, Limited, and Platinum. So the SE is a different one from the LE. So the LE, XLE, and then the Adventure. So I'm gonna leave all this information in the description, um, but if you wanted to you know, use the pause button and, and go through this if you want. I'll leave a link also to you know more information on all these vehicles hopefully i'll be able to do a video on every single one of these trims so that way you can if you're really serious about buying one you can watch those videos and also here's some color choices and here's the 
here's your wheels. But actually, I'll leave a, a link to this entire brochure, a digital version of this, so that way you can look at look through it. It'll be searchable and all that stuff. So, anyways, thank you for watching, and thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, for allowing me to do another awesome vehicle. And I'll see you guys next time.